Welcome back. In this video, I will discuss dynamic item set counting algorithm with a simple solved example. Dynamic item set counting is an alternative to a priori item set generation. I have already discussed how can we apply a priori item set generation algorithm in association rule mining. The link for that video is given in the description below. Item sets are dynamically added and deleted as transactions are read in dynamic item set counting. In a priori algorithm, we consider all transactions at a time so that we can generate the item sets. But in this case, uh, we consider few transactions. Let us say that we consider m transaction at a time so that we can ca find the item sets over here. Dynamic item set counting relies on the fact that for an item set to be frequent, all its subset must be frequent. For example, let us say that ABC is one item set. If you want to say that ABC is frequent item set, its subsets, for example, A, B, C, AB, AC and BC must be frequent. Then only we can say that ABC is a frequent item set. So what we do in a dynamic item set is, let us say that A is frequent and B is frequent. Then we will consider AB and we will see whether AB is frequent or not. If A is frequent, but B is not frequent, in that case, we don't consider A, B because A is frequent here, but B is not a frequent in this case. So that is the idea behind this particular uh, dynamic item set uh, counting here. In dynamic item set counting, uh, we will use different ways to represent the item sets. For example, if we know that a particular item set is a frequent item set, then we use solid box here. We know that uh, a particular item set is infrequent item set. We use solid circle in this case. We know that a particular item set may become a frequent item set in the future. That is suspected uh, frequent item set. Then we use dashed box here. A particular item set will become infrequent in future. That is suspected infrequent item set. We use something called as the dashed circle over here. So these are the notations used to represent the item sets in dynamic item set counting. This is the algorithm for dynamic item set counting. To understand this particular algorithm, we will consider a simple example. In this particular example, we have been given four transactions that is T1, T2, T3, T4. A, B and C are the three items in this case. One represents a particular item is present in that particular transaction. That is this one represents A is present in T1. This zero represents A is not present in T3 over here. We have been given minimum support here. The minimum support in this case is 25%. So 25% of four transaction is nothing but one over here. That is nothing but if a particular item is present in at least one transaction, then we say that that particular item is a frequent item over here. For example, uh, let us say that I want to say that AB is a frequent item set. AB should be present in at least one transaction over here. Then only we can say that AB is a frequent item set over here. Also, the value of M is given to us. The value of M in this case is equal to 2. The meaning of this one is at any given point of time, we read only two transactions over here. Unlike in uh, a priori algorithm, uh, over there we read all transactions so that we can generate the item sets. In this case, we generate item sets by reading only two transactions at a time over here. Before we go with the uh, the dynamic item set counting algorithm. First, we will generate item set lattice over here for the given uh, transaction database. It looks something like this. We start with the uh, empty set here. Now we will add one item at a time. So in this case, we have three items A, B, C. So we will add one node for A, one node for B, one node for C here. And then we will draw an edge from uh, its subset to that particular element here. So subset of A is null set, subset of B is null set, subset of C is null set. So we will draw the edges here. Now we will add the nodes with the two elements at a time. That is A, B, A, C and B, C. The subsets of uh, A, B is A and B. So we will add these two edges. The subset of A, C is A and C. So we will add these two edges and so on. After that, we will consider three items at a time. That is A, B, C. And then we will add these three edges over here. Now, once you draw this particular lattice, now we will try to apply this particular algorithm that is dynamic item set counting algorithm. So the first step of this algorithm is mark the empty item set with the solid square. So we have an empty uh, item set here. We need to mark this particular thing as the solid square. The meaning of this one is it is a frequent item set. That is the simple meaning here. Mark 
all one item sets with the dashed circles so we have one item set that is a b and c so we need to mark them with dashed circles leave all other item sets unmarked here so that is what i have done in this case i have marked this particular empty set with the solid square one item sets with dashed circle here so that is the first step of dynamic item set counting algorithm now in the second step we need to repeat these three things over here while any dashed item sets remain in this case you can see here there are three dashed item sets are there so if we have any dashed item sets we need to repeat these three things so what we need to do first we need to read m transactions m means in this case m is equal to 2 so we need to read two transactions here if we reach the end of transactions we need to start from the beginning again for each transactions increment the respective counters so in this case we have uh, one item at a time so we need to increment the respective counters that is we need to increment the value of a value of b and value of c for the item sets that appear in the transactions if they appear we need to increment it if they doesn't appear we should not increment it and mark the uh, mark them with dashes over here so what we do in this case is if you look at this particular thing m is equal to 2 the meaning is we need to read two transactions here so once you read these two transactions what we need to do is we need to increment the values of this particular item sets so a is appearing in two transactions so we will set a is equal to 2 b is appearing in only one transaction so we will set b is equal to 1 c is not appearing in both the transactions we will set c is equal to 0 here so once you do this particular thing what we need to do is we need to go to the second part of this one that is if dashed circles count exceeds minimum support so what is the minimum support we have that is 25 percent 25 percent of four transaction is equal to one if the value of this dashed circle count increases or exceeds minimum support value turn it to dashed square so if you go to this particular diagram if you look at here that is a and b the minimum support is how much one the value of a is equal to two the value of b is equal to one they is more or equivalent to that particular minimum support so what we do is we will change this particular circles the dashed circles with dashed box here so that is the first thing we do here so that is what you can see that is what i have done where uh, i have converted this a and b with dashed box or you can say that dashed uh, square here next what we need to do is if any immediate superset of it has all its subsets as a solid or dashed square add a new counter for it and make it as a dashed circle here so now if you look at this particular diagram in this particular diagram a and b are dashed squares here so because it's a dashed square its superset that is ab will be marked with dashed circle and ab will be set to zero in this case so that is what the meaning of this one now we will go to the third step of second one once a dashed item set has been counted through all the transactions make it as a solid and stop counting it till now we have read only two transactions that is t1 and t2 once you read all these transactions if we have any dashed circle or square we need to make them as a solid one so right now we have read only two transactions because we have left with two more transactions we should not make these particular things as a solid over here now coming back to the uh, again we need to come back to this particular the first step of second one so what we need to do here again we need to read m more transactions so we have read uh, already two transactions we need to read remaining two transactions that is t3 and t4 here so once you read this particular t3 and t4 this is what the previous step uh, diagram here uh, we need to uh, start adding this particular or incrementing these particular counters here now if you look at here a b is not appearing in these two transactions it will be kept as it is here b is appearing in one transaction so we will increment the value of b to 2 here c is appearing in one transaction so we set the value of c is equal to 1 a b is not appearing in any of these particular transactions it is set to 0 only here so whatever the values were there we have updated at this particular step so that's the first thing we need to do so once you do that part thing what we need to do if you have a dashed circle and whose count exceeds minimum support what we need to do we need to convert it into dashed square here now if you look at here uh, a b are already converted now we need to see the value of c here so what is the value of c we got the value of c is equal to 1 in this case 
now what we do here we will convert this particular thing into dashed square here now once you convert this particular dashed square what is the third step says if you have read all the transactions for that particular item set it should be made as a solid one now if you look at here for this particular c we have already read two transactions here we have read two more transactions the meaning is we have read all transactions this particular dashed square will be converted into square solid square over here so that is the next thing we need to remember now coming back to this particular ab previously it was zero now also it is zero so we should not modify anything over here so whatever is there the same thing has been kept over here now coming back to these two things if you look at here a and b are frequent here because a and b are frequent what we need to do is we need to consider ac as the uh, dashed circle the meaning of this one is ac may become we can say that frequent in future here similarly b and c are frequent here so we need to consider this bc as the uh, dashed circle the meaning of this one is bc may become uh, frequent item set in future so that's the reason we have added these two things here so previously ac and bc were not considered now ac and bc were considered whose value is set to what zero in this particular case for ab we have read t3 and t4 for ac and bc we have not read any transactions till now now i have considered that particular previous diagram over here and then we will read two more transactions that is nothing but we will read the first two transactions again here now as said earlier a b c were already completed so we should not uh, modify it we have kept it as it is now if you look at uh, the value of a b previous it was zero now a b is appearing in transaction t1 so the value of a b is set to what one in this particular case and uh, a c is not appearing here b c is not appearing so we have kept the values of a c and b c equivalent to zero zero over here now uh, we need to see this particular value of AB. AB is equal to 1. The meaning of this one is uh, AB's uh, value is uh, exceeding this particular minimum support. So what we do here is the AB is converted into dashed square here. Now once you consider this particular dashed square, you can see here. Previously we have considered T3 and T4 for AB. Now we have considered T1 and T2. So we have considered all four transactions. So this will be converted into solid square here. So that is what I have done at this particular point of time. So AB's part is over. Now if you consider AC and BC, the value of AC is equal to 0 and BC is equal to 0. It is not exceeding the minimum support. So we don't alter anything over here. We will keep this particular AC and BC as it is. Now what we do? I have considered that particular diagram over here. Now we need to read two more transactions that is 4m which is equal to eight transactions we have read these two transactions in the previous iteration we will consider t3 and t4 here now once you consider t3 and t4 uh, again uh, we should not modify a b c and a b because we have considered all four transactions for these things only we need to modify a c and b c now if you look at here a c is not appearing so we have kept it to zero b c is appearing once here so we have set b c is equal to one in this case now once you set bc is equal to 1 the meaning of this one is it is exceeding the minimum support so we will convert it into what solid box or a square here now if you look at this particular bc in the previous iteration we have considered t1 and t2 for bc it was not appearing so we have kept it is equal to 0 now we have considered t3 and t4 for bc now the meaning of this one is all four transactions were considered for bc here because all four transactions were considered according to algorithm we need to con convert this particular dashed square into solid square here so that is the one more thing so that is what i have done here apart from this particular thing for ac also in the previous iteration we have considered t1 and t2 in this iteration we have considered t3 and t4 the meaning is what for ac also we have considered all four transactions so this dashed circle will be converted into solid circle over here now what is the meaning of this solid circle the meaning of this one is ac is infrequent over here so ab is a frequent item set bc is a frequent item set a b c are frequent item sets but ac is not a frequent item set because ac is not a frequent item set we cannot consider abc here if you want to make sure that abc is frequent item set its all subset should be frequent a is frequent b is frequent c is frequent ab is frequent bc is frequent 
but AC is not frequent, so we cannot consider ABC over here. So that is what I have written here. We have counted uh, all transactions for AB, AC and BC. Uh, we have converted all of them into solids over here. Um, we cannot consider ABC as the frequent item set or item set because AC is not a frequent item set over here. In this uh, uh, lattice, we don't have any dashed item sets. The meaning of this one is we need to stop algorithm over here. So for a given uh, transactions, we got five uh, frequent item sets A, B, C, A, B and B, C after applying dynamic item set counting algorithm in this case. So this is how we apply dynamic item set counting algorithm for the given uh, transaction database so that we can calculate or find the frequent item sets over here. I hope the concept is clear. If you like the video, do like and share with your friends. Press the subscribe button for more videos. Press the bell icon for regular updates. Thank you for watching.